So in terms of classifying cryosols, they are a little bit more challenging, uh, particularly the turbic cryosols, just because the horizons aren't nice, neat layers like they are in so many of the, uh, of the other soils. Uh, in static cryosols, or in most of the other soils that we've looked at so far, there's these beautiful uh, horizontal horizons, and they tend to make things relatively easy to, easy to classify. Even within the vertisols, with all of their mixing and churning, the, it tends to be in, in such a way that you can describe a whole layer as being heavily churned, and it, it's still along a horizontal layer. In turbic cryosols, it's a little bit uh, a little bit messier than that. So in this particular in this particular soil profile, uh, what we're looking at is we've got uh, near the surface here we've got uh, uh, what we would call a, a probably a BC horizon. So this this about zero to ten centimeters would be a, a BC horizon. So where that's transitional between a B and a C, it's uh, there's not a lot of um, modification relative to the original parent material, but uh, it is slightly weathered relative to the original parent material. And this particular area here, ranging from here to here, and you can see here where there's the, the vegetation kind of starts along, along this side here, uh, along that area would be where we would be uh, seeing the, the completely unvegetated center of that pattern ground feature. So this would be our, our, our BC horizon here. We would have the, the dark layer over here would be the, uh, the AH, uh, AH or AHY horizon. So we've got um, mineral, uh, mineral soil there, significant organic matter input, hence the very dark color associated with it. But it is, uh, very, much, uh, it is very much a mineral soil. It's not just a buildup of, of organic matter in this, in this particular example. Underneath that, along on, on both sides, so there's one uh, immediately underneath where I'm sitting as well, but on both sides of the pit, there, just underneath the AHY, there's a, there's a thin BM horizon, so a slightly modified horizon. Not overly mixed, but just relative to, there's been obviously some oxidation of the iron minerals in, these, in, the, in the horizon. So a thin BM horizon just underneath here. But the other thing that we have is just sort of in a, a general circular shape here, we've got this, this horizon that's quite a bit redder than the surrounding material. And so this horizon ranging from just right around 10 centimeters here and down uh, in sort of a lobe shape down underneath here, it's about a uh, good 20 centimeters, 25 centimeters thick. Uh, there's this redder, slightly redder horizon and it's uh, not, uh, it, it's, um, it's more oxidized than the material around it, and it's basically it would be described as a BMY horizon. And in, the, in this particular profile, that's the horizon that would be, we would consider to be the, uh, one of the diagnostic horizons. The Y in this case is referring to the evidence of cryoturbation. Beneath that, then, we get back to material that looks very similar to what we have at the surface, which would be a, a, a BC Y horizon again, so capital B, capital C, and then the Y again, referring to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, the occurrence of, of cryoturbation. And then if we get down, once we get down to about two meters, so close to the bottom of the pit here, we get into the, into the permafrost. So in this case, that would be classified as a CZ horizon. So the Z being uh, the, the suffix that denotes the presence of permafrost within the soil.